sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. I think it would be safe to say that when it comes to covering a variety of water depths quickly, most bass fishermen would agree that of all the fishing lures on the market, none would equal the crankbait. Crankbaits come in several models, and each are designed for different situations. Some for deep water applications, other for shallow water. Some are made to wobble, others are made to wiggle. Some are long, some short, some fat, some skinny. Most are designed to represent forage that bass feed on. Shed, bluegill, minnows, crawfish, perch, all of which will catch fish at one time or another. To be successful with any of these lures, an angler must first determine the depth the most active fish are using, and then begin experimenting with different models, sizes, and colors. He must also be aware of his presentation at all times. You know, that is really, really critical the presentation. You gotta mix it up to find out what the fish want. Seemingly little things can make all the difference too. Let's say as an example that you've established the best depth in an ideal location and you know the fish are feeding on shad. Here most fishermen would usually select a crankbait that resembles the forage in a model that will run to a depth where the bait fish are located. So you follow suit. Yet, after a few dozen casts, you failed to even get a strike. You varied your presentation from fast to slow, slow to fast, to stop and go. What's happening here? Believe it or not, it could be something as simple as the action of your bait. You know, bass have the uncanny ability to differentiate slight details and differences in lures through a hydrodynamic imaging process which we as anglers can't understand. Now, what this tells us is that no lure is really better than another all the time. But sometimes using different lures can be the key to success. There's a little point that comes out right there and drops off. You can tell by that outcrop in a cover. It drops off real quick. There's several of those right up that bank. There we go. Where are you going, man? Whoa, it's a nice one. Whoa, boy, it's a nice one. Look at that and pull it. Good fish, too. That is a good fish. Okay, easy. Come up here. Come up here for your big head. Come here. Now, look at me. There it is. Look at that one. That's a good six and a half pound fish. Whoa. See you, biggin. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Rebel Catch Fish Anywhere. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. And Mercury Marine, number one on the water. Today's conditions log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. 
Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. deeper water. Look at that one. He's a bulldog. He's bulldogging it. Nice fish. A pretty little fish right there. Laser eye, didn't you? Nice bait. Okay, baby. Time to say bye-bye. That thing looks so much like a shiner. It's unbelievable. It really does. Okay, you know, different models create different vibrations, and bass, for sure, can detect differences in water displacement. Anything moving through the water creates displacement. A wobbling action creates one type of sound, while a wiggling action creates a completely different type of sound. Now this is why you should always experiment with different lure actions before leaving an area you've really got confidence in. Now speaking of confidence, here's a prime example. See that shoreline behind me? In the past couple of days, we've caught some really nice bass off of it in a depth of six to 10 feet. And the best lure was a fat-bodied crankbait. Now, today, I've made several passes up and down it, but only caught one bass and I missed another one. Well, I knew the fish were still there because I could see them on my graph. So after changing lures, I've caught about six. And that's in the past couple of hours. And the bait that I'm using now is an olive shad colored Bass Pro Shop five inch laser eye shad. It's a flat sided bait that I'm fishing in a depth of approximately eight feet. The action that's triggering these strikes right now is a tight wiggling action versus a wobbling action that I was first trying. This flat sided bait wiggles where round sided baits wobble creating two different vibrations. And right now, the tight wiggling action is by far the most attractive. Here we come. Hey, one of them run right out to the boat with it. Where are you going? Oh, got another good one. And I mean a good one. Look at that big baby go there. He's full of himself. Yes, he is, boys and girls. Come on. Throw your big old head around. Don't get me hooked. Don't get me hooked. Ooh. Oh, look at that. That shiner is a five inch. That laser eye, that's not very big for that big old mouth. Isn't that pretty? Yes. See you, sweetie. Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels, fishing at a quantum level. Mystic Lubricants. Lubrication Domination, and Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest.
Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Today's show is sponsored in part by Gamakatsu, world's finest hooks. Grand Slam Mono and Brave, big fish tough for when the money's on the line. And by Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Stripping that drag, I know that. Oh, look at that big old, that big old fat bass. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. Come here. There it goes. Who are you looking at? Who are you looking at? If you don't think skinny sided baits aren't effective, think about this. How many bass do you think are caught every year on lipless crankbaits? There's absolutely no telling. Well, basically, that's what you've got here. It's a laser eye shed swimmer bait, which has a durable soft plastic holographic finish body. And it's available in three sizes, a three inch, four inch, and five inch. Now, some of the features I really like about it are, it's soft, not hard. When bass are soft biting, they won't turn it loose as quick, simply because it feels so natural, enabling you to get a much quicker and better hook set. It has a double jointed action that produces a natural swimming motion and creates a highly attractive vibration that fish can detect from a mighty long distance. It also has oversized eyes, which is a major attraction. Why? Well, predator fish, like the bass, use the eyes of prey fish as a focal or aiming point during the strike. The fishing line we're using today is Grand Slam fluorocarbon coated, which is an extra strong 100% copolymer with a fluorocarbon outer coating. It's super sensitive, low stretch, has a tremendous knot strength, abrasion resistance, and is virtually invisible and very manageable either on spinning or bait casting. You look at the size of a bass's mouth and what they, what they, what was that? What they can eat is unbelievable. They can take a bluegill or tilapia, much bigger than my hand like that and just take it just like it was nothing to it. Take a big eight, nine pound fish. There he is. Well. The little guy. See, he tried to eat the whole thing. His mouth's not all that big. Look at that. See that little bow? He got that whole thing down his mouth. That ain't nothing for that little mouth. They, they can eat more than you think they can eat.
Today's Dancing Lesson is sponsored by Bill Dance on Facebook. Like us on Facebook and join in the Bill Dance Facebook fun. Bill posts all the time, and you'll get more great fishing tips there, too. One of the highlights of my life has always been helping folks learn how to catch fish. And from looking at all the pictures, it looks like the action has been simply great. Fishermen everywhere are showing off their catch to owners of the Bill Dance app. What? You don't have a copy? Well, we can fix that. Simply download our free app on the iPhone, iPad, or Android mobile device and begin showing off your catch to anglers around the world. The fishing tips are free and so is the app. Today's show is sponsored in part by Orca Coolers, the all-American everywhere product, and Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning provided by Power Pole, the original shallow water anchor. There's a school of bait. There's a big fish. See him right there? He's right about eight foot. There goes a bait fish right up above here. I got into about 12. Most of the bass we're catching along this shoreline are suspended in a depth of about 10 feet. And we're following a 10 foot interval line, keeping our boat in a depth of about 15 to 20 feet. Now, if this 10 foot interval line runs in closer to the shoreline, I'll move in with it. If it turns out, I'll follow it out. But I always keeping my boat, like I said, in about 15 to 20 feet of water, fan casting as I move along. Now, the fish along this break are scattered, but have definitely selected a depth of about 10 feet and they've been using this for several days. Now one key thing about this shoreline is that the best locations along this 10 foot break is where the 20 foot interval lines run in closest to it. There it is. There you go. Coming right at me every time. Another boy horse. He just wants to put it big. Oh, look at that. Jumping, jumping, jumping. Barely got him hooked. I just barely saw that hook in him. Just stay hooked there, baby. Pop goes the weasel. Let me get this out of the way. You know, establishing a depth pattern is perhaps the most important key to catching bass, regardless of what lure you're fishing. The best lure in the world, fish, with the perfect presentation, is not going to catch many fish if it's fished at the wrong depth. Bass select certain depth levels for a multitude of reasons, and if you're to catch them, you've got to get on their depth level. And one of the quickest ways to do this is with the aid of your grab. When checking out deeper depths, say 10 feet or deeper, I use my outboard. But in shallower depths, I normally use my trolling motor, and I've got a bow mount transducer on it, which is a major plus. I'm coming right at the boat. Big one, too. Ooh, look at that big walling bass. Ooh. Look at that big fish. Look at that big hunky bunk, as Tom Mann used to say. Oh, boy, isn't that something? Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to show him off. Look at that, Johnny Morris. Look what your bait caught. Boy, today's been fun. We have caught some pretty fish. Yes, we have. You know, the profile of the laser eye shad seems to imitate a shiner or shad better than most crankbaits I've ever fished. And it's shown me many, many times that it catches bass when many other baits fail. 
I tell you what you do. You give one a try and see what you think. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. If you're looking for the latest fishing information and tips, be sure to check out the new Bill Dance iPhone and iPad app. Free in the App Store. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin's new Echo Map series of chart plotter sonar combos. These awesome push button units provide the clearest scanning sonar images on the water. Bass Pro's new 5 8 ounce Kermie Frog gets plenty of attention. Its realistic body cuts through the wind, lands belly down, and starts kicking its way through the heaviest cover. Super active silicone rubber legs respond to every movement of your rod tip awaiting for the explosive blow up that's very likely to come on any cast. The Kermy Frog comes ready to fish in 11 super fish attracting colors. It's on a day like today, there's one place I gotta be. I'm gone fishing. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Please join us again next week for more great fun fishing. Fishing with Bill Day.